Xi'an, home to the terracotta warriors of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Hundreds of kilometers to the south, and giant pandas can be found in the spice capital of Chengdu. And I'm about to visit both of these places in just one day. Rojan Mo could be called the oldest hamburger in the world. In fact, this bread has been in China since the Qing Dynasty. Well, I hope not this one. It tastes a little bit fresher. And um, actually, Rojan Mo is a word that lots of foreigners learn very early on when they move to China because it sounds a lot like Roger Moore. And if you say it quickly, Roger Moore, Roger Moore, Rojan Mo, I mean, whatever. By whatever name, it doesn't really matter. It tastes delicious. There's absolutely thousands of these figurines all over this site, including warriors, horses and chariots. And because of their proximity so close to the emperor's tomb, lots of people say that they were his army for the afterlife. This whole army was actually found just by accident. A group of farmers were digging a well and they found tiny fragments of what would end up being all of this. And now it's a UNESCO site and many people call it the eighth wonder of the world. A popular lunch dish here is called Yangro Palmo, which is made from this bread. One of the origin stories about where this came from was that there used to be an emperor who travelled across the country around the Song Dynasty. And by the end of his journey, all he had left was two dry, stale loaves of bread. But he happened across a lamb soup store and he popped in and to really like bulk out his meal, he ripped up the bread and put it in the soup. And that's how Yangro Palmo was born. Stretching over 600 kilometers, this route runs through rugged but breathtaking terrain. It's reduced the travel time between the two cities from 13 hours to just four, making it possible to make the trip before your flask of coffee gets cold. Panda centres like here in Chengdu means you can get really close and personal with these pandas. I mean, obviously there's still a distance between me and them. And there's around 500 of them in captivity and just under 2,000 that are out living in the wild. So the work that they do here at panda centres makes a real difference. Hot Pot is a fiery, fragrant broth that's used to cook a variety of items like meat and tofu and lots of different vegetables. It's made from a base of oil and chili peppers and Szechuan peppercorns and lots of other spices. And for those people who break out into a sweat just at the sound of the uh, Scoville scale, there's also a mild, salty and a sour version too. And with that part of the journey over, Let's get down to business. More than a thousand years ago, the Chinese poet Li Bai said it was easier to climb up to heaven than it was to walk the mountains of Sichuan. I'm sure that this new rail line would inspire more than a few new poems. This is Xinhua Special. I'm Helen Bentley. This is China's first ever rail route to go through the Qin Mountains. The Qin Mountains connect Sichuan Basin with the Guangzhou Plains and creates a natural boundary between the north and south of China. It's challenging terrain. And in the Shanxi section alone, 93% of the railway tracks either go through tunnels or are laid on top of bridges. And there's one area where you climb a thousand meters in altitude that only travel 45 kilometers in distance. The construction of this line only started five years ago, but it applied the most advanced technology and processes. Engineers designed this route so that it would avoid nature reserves and also have the little amount of impact on the natural environment. After all, this area is home to the giant panda and the crested ibis, as well as numerous plant and animal species that do not live anywhere else in the world. On the other hand, 
For those people that were living in the poor remote communities who didn't even have normal speed rail in the first place, they now have China's high speed rail network right on their doorsteps, bringing with it opportunities for them to improve their lives. And added to that, the western area of China will become more integrated and hopefully an economic powerhouse will emerge that can rival the three in the east. The Xi'an to Chenggu high-speed rail is just one of many across the country, making its vastness seem much smaller. This offers a way to address what Xi Jinping has called the principal contradiction facing Chinese society, which is the contradiction between unbalanced and inadequate development and the people's ever-growing needs for a better life. China has laid more than 22,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, 60% of the world's total. Targets have been set at 30,000 kilometers by 2020 to reach 80% of all major cities, and 38,000 kilometers by 2025 and 45 kilometers by 2030. Hundreds of billions of dollars were spent on building the world's largest rail network. Now these Chinese manufactured trains are being sold to over a hundred countries and regions. Last year, these contracts topped $18 billion, a 40% increase from 2015. The construction of high-speed rails, ports, bridges and other infrastructure will continue thanks to investment, so that China can become, as Xi Jinping said in his report to the 19th National Congress, a transportation power. In September this year, the speed of the bullet trains between Beijing and Shanghai was restored to 350 km an hour. This is six years after it was reduced to 300 km over safety concerns. Thus, China once again holds the title of the world's fastest train, and it aims to have a third of all high-speed trains running at this top speed soon. Perhaps the role of high-speed rail in China's overall development can be no better articulated than in the renaming of that train to Fuxing, which means national rejuvenation. See you next time.